Hello, this is Salam. In this video, I will show in-depth look and review this plasma cutter made by S Welder. It's cut 55 DS and it run on 110 and 220. I already assembled it. In this video, I will show you the unboxing, how to set it up, and we're going to try to cut some metal with it. And I will provide uh, safety tips and operation tips for those who just start using plasma cutters. I hope you enjoy this video. Twenty four pound. About eleven kilogram. Six point nine kilogram. Fifteen pound. By default, this machine came set up for one twenty volt AC for United States. In different countries, you may receive different type of plug, and to convert it to two twenty. You just need to use this tail end. This is just a connection point. It doesn't have anything inside it other than convert this plug to 220 plug. The machine has internal component that sense what type of voltage being delivered to it, and it will adjust accordingly. It's very simple design. This how you adjust the current, and it will display the setting, and this show how much compressed air being delivered to the machine. On the back side, it only has on and off a switch. And this over here, where you install this moisture separator and filter, and it came with all the fitting. I tie this connector up using wrenches. Be careful when you install this connector, you need to make sure you align the groove in this connector with this part. I am going to use this unmodified 26 gallon air compressor 
I thought to use this one instead of my other compressor, the one I built, moisture separator, and it has good quality filter on the pump, and it could deliver a clean and a dry air. You need to do this to your uh, plasma cutter to extend the life of the machine. However, I thought most of you will start with air compressor like this one, so I'm going to test the plasma cutter with this air compressor. To get the most out of your plasma cutter, you need to make sure you are not suffering from voltage drop in your shop, or if you are using extension cord, make sure to use heavy gauge wire so you don't suffer from voltage drop. The 220 circuit, it's 50 amp, and the 120 circuit, I have it connected to 20 amp circuit. You probably have to upgrade your circuit to get the most out of this machine it's capable of connected to higher circuit than this i believe the manual show the 220 it could be connected to 65 amp circuit and the 120 to 35 amp circuit i made this tail end in the past to review welders and other stuff so i could check the current I could connect the clap meter over here and I could check the current. And I will connect this in a little bit when I test the welder. The 120. It's about 125 volt. 60 hertz. You need to make sure you have good electrical ground for your safety and make sure it's connected all the time. It's usually the green wire. The small tab is the hot wire. To test if you have good ground, go from the hot to the ground. And if you read voltage, that means you have good ground. My 220 is read 250 volt, 60 hertz. In the United States, the 220, both of these tabs are hot. So if you go to any of them to ground, you should read voltage. One twenty five to this tab. And one twenty five to the other tab. So the ground is good. This plasma cutter came with all the accessories needed to get it operational. I already connected the torch. This tab delivered the compressed air and the high current required to cut metal. When you adjust the knob, you adjust the current that flow through this. This over here, the pilot arc. This machine capable of start uh, the plasma without this touching the metal. There is other type of plasma cutter. You have to scratch the torch to the metal to initiate the arc. This is way better design because with this you could cut rusted metal and painted metal. And I will show you this here in a little bit. This over here, the trigger. This is very easy setup. You could easily add this plasma cutter to any CNC plasma table to be able to cut using CNC or computerized machine if you want very precise cuts. This over here is the work clamp. And this has copper over here for better connection. Very easy setup. You just have this current adjuster knob and it will display the current setting and it has some LED for overheat and other stuff and it has the gauge. This show how much compressed air you allow to flow through the torch. Yes welder, they supply this filter. It's also air regulator. So if your air compressor doesn't have regulator, you could adjust the amount of pressure 
that to flow through this machine. And it has on and off a switch over here in the back. And over here, it will show you the data tag, the information you need to operate this machine on 110 volt and 220 volt. And it show the input voltage 35 amp on 110, 55 amp on 220, and the output voltage, that's the voltage that flow through this torch. It's 50, it's 94 volt on 110 and 96 on 220. I use my own quarter inch NPT quick connector to be able to connect the air hose easier to this machine. I used the S welder supplied line to connect from the filter or regulator to the machine using this hose clamp. And over here it has a quick connector. You could just insert the hose and you don't have to do anything else. I measured the three cables for this machine from the tip to the machine itself and the torch measured 13 feet or about 3.9 meter. The work clamp measured nine and a half feet, about 2.8 meter. And the power cable, it's measured six feet or 1.8 meter. I'm going to connect the machine to the air compressor using the quick connector that I installed on the filter or regulator of this machine. And I'm going to connect it first to the 110 or 120 circuit. The dial is not potentiometer, it's an encoder. As you see, you keep rotated all the way, and then when you rotate it back, it will adjust the current. From my experience using plasma cutters, I always set the dial to the maximum current I could run the machine on the circuit breaker that's connected to. However, sometimes if you are cutting stainless steel or aluminum or very thin sheet metal, you need to lower the setting so you don't deform the metal or cause war because extra heat will cause uh, wider cut and it will also cause more heat than you need to cut this metal. So you could adjust this accordingly, but for this video, I will set it to the maximum. Also, don't turn on this machine until you are ready to use it. Don't leave it on and leave this torch laying on the table because you could hit it accidentally and this could lead to injury. The torch will initiate and also high current will be at the tip and this may cause electrocution. Also, this is a trigger. It could be annoying if you are wearing a welding gloves, and I highly recommend you wear a good uh, safety clothing, something that's not gonna get damaged by sparks, leather gloves, work boot with safety toes, so if you drop anything, and there's high chance you drop metal while you're cutting, the metal will drop, and then you will hit your feet. So it's very important to wear a good safety gear. Also, uh, this uh, machine, it has uh, both uh, airflow. After you stop, the air will continue to flow to cool this down. You also need to adjust the regulator to get the recommended air pressure. They recommend about 50 PSI on 110 and about 60 PSI on 220. The gauge shows zero because the machine is not running.
it's about five seconds and I need to increase the pressure it's only 30 psi I am going to start cutting the 16 gauge rusted sheet metal it's about 1.6 millimeter thickness or about 1 16th of inch you need to make sure to use welding mask to protect your eyes This machine didn't run good on my 120 volt circuit. The circuit breaker kept popping. This machine was making popping sound and it didn't cut good. This is an example of what it was doing. Even if I set the current to the lowest setting on the machine, it will not cut and the circuit breaker kept it ripping. The way I was able to run this machine on 120 circuit is by modifying the plug that I have in my garage for the 240 or 220 circuit. It's connected to 50 amp circuit breaker. There is two of them, one for each leg. What I did, I disconnected the one, the wider one, and I connected to the neutral. So right now I have 120 over here, and this is larger size cable. When I use this extension cord, it's the same size as the power cord that came with the machine. And this only 25 feet. Total distance from the outlet to the circuit breaker, about 40 feet. And it didn't do good. However, on this one, using these adapters, I was able to run it on 120. And I was able to get good result. If you are planning to run this machine on 120, it's a bad idea if you're thinking about just upgrading the circuit breaker to higher current than what you have. It's common here in the United States to have a 20 amp circuit breaker for all the 120 or 110 outlets because the wire inside the wall is a 12 gauge. And if you upgrade the circuit breaker only and you try to use machine like this it will higher current, then this may overheat the wire and it will melt the rubber around it and this may cause fire or may cause damage to your house. So don't do it. If you only have 120, then hire electrician, let them upgrade the wire size and the circuit breaker so you could use this machine. I'm planning to use it on 220 if it did good. However, I'm only testing the 120 for the purpose of this video if you only have 120 available to you. I have the plasma cutter connected to 120 volt and it's set at maximum current 55. I'm reading the current now on 120 volt and the machine set to 55.
this is the result I got with the machine set to 55. Now I set it to 40 and I'll try it. It cut just fine on 40 amp or 40 amp setting. Now I have the machine set to 30. To produce more slag, I had to uh, fight it with the plier to get it off. So I think 30 setting is the minimum for 16 gauge sheet metal on 120 volt. I have the current setting on the machine set to 55. The pressure is set to about 50, 51 PSI. And I'm going to read the DC current from the work clamp. I have the clamp meter ready. It's set on DC amp. I'll set the camera on the tripod and try it. This machine will cut fine with the setting set between 40 to 55 on 120 volt, 16 gauge sheet metal with a lot of rust on it. Let me try to use different thickness uh, steel and cut with it on 120. This one over here is 1 8 of inch sheet metal and it's painted. I clean the area where I connect the ground or the work clamp. I have the camera set so close to the cutting process to capture better video for you. I discovered when I inspected the video, some video clip didn't have audio files. I thought it may be an issue with the camera. I restarted the camera and it was captured in audio. And then I discovered Randomly when I initiate the arc the camera will stop recording audios. I Had to set the camera away from the cutting process and this fixed the issue But I thought to include some of these clips in this video to show you that the plasma cutter was cutting good I was able to use the plasma cutter to cut this angle iron. It's a 3 16th of inch thick the camera stopped recording audio after I initiated the arc, however the plasma cutter did good job of cutting this angle iron and also to drill holes on the side of it. While I'm editing the video, I decided to only include these last few clips, the one that didn't include audio file, however the rest of the video will include the original sound file that the camera captured. I am using GoPro to record this and I have it set very close to where I'm cutting. I believe the cutting process 
is generating radio wave and this will affect the camera and make it stop recording audio. I will re-record cutting this quarter inch flat stock. Hopefully I'll be able to record audio for you. And then I will set the camera and I will take a current reading out of the input and output of this plasma cutter running on 120 volt. This is quarter inch, about 6.3 millimeter. If you remove the slag, the cut look beautiful and it's way faster than using the grinder, even though it's struggling on 120 volt. Cutting the quarter inch flat stock on 120, 50 PSI, and the machine set to 55. I am also going to take AC current reading from the work clamp. I'm still cutting the quarter inch on 120. Now I am taking the input current reading on 120 cutting quarter inch flat stock. I did say to make sure to use welding mask when you use a plasma cutter because the flash produced by it is similar to the welding process so it will damage your eyes if you don't use welding mask. This has a shield inside to protect you from the rays that generated from the welding process or the cutting process in case of plasma cutter. Now I'm going to cut 16 gauge piece of a 304 stainless steel then I will cut 8 inch thick piece of stainless steel and then I cut 8 inch thick piece of aluminum. I'm still on 120. Also it's very good idea when you're cutting stainless steel using a plasma or oxyacetylene torch to do it outdoor in very well ventilated area or if you have fume extractor because this contains chromium and it's very toxic. I forgot to connect the working clamp directly to the piece of stainless steel that I was cutting. However, it made contact with the barrel and everything is steel, so that made connection and I was able to cut this piece of stainless steel. Actually, it's cut it very nice. And it didn't burn the stainless. This is eighth of inch thick piece of stainless steel.
you could actually cut very accurately if you measure the distance from the center hole of the tip to the outside of the gar and you could add it or subtract, subtract it from the piece that you are cutting and this way you get straight and clean cut I also would like to note this machine has two modes, 2T and 4T. 2T, you have to keep pressing the trigger while you're cutting. 4T, you press the trigger to start cutting and then you could let go. And when you finish the cut, the machine will stop automatically or you have to press the trigger and let go. If you want to stop, if you cut to here and you want to stop, then you press the trigger again and the machine will stop. And to change these modes, you have to use this arrow and there's two LED the green one for 2T and the blue one for 40 the 40 is useful if you're cutting long cut your finger so close to the plasma or to the heat the heat will start bothering you so it's good idea to start cutting and then back your hand and continue the cut And now the final piece I'm going to cut on 120 is this piece of aluminum. It's eighth inch thick. It did a great job cutting aluminum.
One last thing, I forgot I have this chop saw disc. It's hardened steel, about eighth inch thick. I'll try to cut it on 120. Just cut small piece. Cut it, no problem. And now I'm ready to switch my outlet to 220, but I want to show you this cup over here or the filter is almost full of water by just making this a few cuts. That's because my air compressor is not modified and uh, there is a lot of moisture coming in this compressed air. As you see this filter, it trapped a lot of water. You could press this and the water will come out. However, it's a bad idea to do this while the machine is running as this fan may pull the water and shoot it on the circuitry inside. So I'm going to turn off the machine and when I disconnect this hose, the pressure that keep this pinned down, it will release and this is spring loaded. It's going to come up and the water will come down by itself. While this gets draining, I'm going to go inside and reconnect the 220 outlet to produce 220 so I could try this welder on 220. I will cut this 16 gauge rusted sheet metal on 220. I have the machine set to 55. And now it's set to 40. It cut way better and faster. I lowered it to 30. I have to go slower on 30. I am going to check the input current while cutting this quarter inch stock because this is what I did when I cut this on 120. I am going to set the current to the maximum, 55.
it did cut it way easier on 220. Now I'm checking the output current. It has no problem cutting quarter inch thick metal on 220. This is a quarter inch painted metal, eight inch wide. I'm recutting this 8 inch thick piece of stainless steel. Now I'm cut it on 220. The machine set to 55 and I have 60 PSI air pressure. It did better as you see I was able to go a little bit faster it didn't burn the metal now I'm going to cut this 3 8 thick about 9.53 millimeter
No problem cutting this 3 8 thick piece of metal. The slide came out easy. And now I'm going to cut this half inch thick flat stock. And now I'm going to cut this three quarter inch thick flat stock. It's about 19 millimeter. It's going in about half inch and stopping. However, it's doing good with half inch. I'm not planning to use it on half inch. I'm only going to cut 16 gauge to quarter inch. That's the plan for this plasma cutter. I have a torch, oxyacetylene torch, and I was able to cut three and a half inch thick steel with that, so there is no need to stress the supplies maketa. This is half inch thick steel, about 13 millimeter. It's wider, it's 10 inch in this dimension.
I just have to go a little bit slower. This is quarter inch cut, 3 8 cut, and half inch cut. And this is how much scrap metal we cut today using this plasma cutter. When you start the machine, all the LED or indicators will come on to show you they all function. Once the machine booted, this light will stay on to indicate there is power on the machine. This one indicate the machine overheated and you need to stop. This one, if it illuminate, that mean there is something wrong with the torch or you didn't install the consumable right, so you need to correct the issue. These two over here for the 2T and 4T mode and you switch those via this button. These two indicators, this one, it means there is no compressed air at the machine or not enough compressed air. This one over here, it means there is compressed air and the machine good to cut. This button will allow the air to flow through the machine so you could set your gauge, you could adjust the regulator on the back of this machine to get 50 or 60 PSI. I'm adjusting the regulator right now. And this one over here to adjust the current. This Yes Welder plasma cutter did good job. I was able to cut up to quarter inch thick steel on 120 and up to half inch thick on 220. If you are planning to buy one of these, make sure you have enough power to run it. Also make sure to modify your air compressor to deliver clean and dry air. I modified another air compressor and I'm planning to use this plasma cutter with it. With this air compressor, I had to empty this filter twice. It got filled with water and I had to empty it. Also get a 55 gallon steel drum to collect all the spark and all the scrap so you don't have to clean after you do your small cuts. I'm planning to use this machine on 220 with my modified air compressor. I will link uh, to the video when I did the dryer or the water separator for that compressor at the end of this video. I'm planning to use that with this plasma cutter. And I won't cut anything thicker than quarter inch. The only advantage to plasma cutter over a grinder, you could cut uh, shapes with it, you don't have to cut straight line, and also it does faster job on cutting steel so you don't have to sit on the grinder, and this is in my opinion safer. With the grinder, you run the risk of the disc break and it may hurt you. This one over here, it's safer. You just have to follow the safety rule provided in the manual and the one I provided you throughout this video. Other than that, I hope this video was informative. Thank you for watching. Be safe and have a good day.